Hello, today I'm at the Outdoor Farming Museum in Valdorn, or just outside Valdorn, and this place is called uh, Guttersdorf. And I'm meeting here Margaret Sauer, who looks after the uh, museum, and uh, I'll get her to tell us a little bit about it. Hello, uh, my name is Margarita Sauer. We are here in the Odenwälder Freiland Museum in um, Gottersdorf. That's a little um, uh, it's a part of Waldürn. Waldürn is um, on the border between Bavaria, um, Baden-Württemberg and Hessen. And um, it's an open air museum, so you can see a lot of old houses here. Um, sort of the range is within the last 300 years. And you can see how a day laborer worked, um, lived, and um, how a sort of a rich person lived. Um, we are divided, we have two um, kind of groups of houses, one is from the Odenwald and one is from the Bauland. We are here, it's kind of a, a separation between two geological um, uh, stratas. So it's quite interesting to see that here. We have a lot of events all year round. We are open from March till November and um, you can see living history um, uh, actions here. We have uh, Grünkern Fest, that's um, sort of the regional uh, grain that's uh, produced here and we serve uh, food from that. Uh, we have a, a day for old timers where uh, cars and vehicles of all um, sorts and kinds come. So yeah, there's a lot going on and uh, you can check out our website if you like on www.freilandmuseum.com. So we are here in a Fachwerkhaus, um, a wood timber frame house um, from Neckarburgen. That's, um, yeah, as it says in Neckar, it's uh, close to Mosbach. And it was um, a farmer's house and they had three children living here. They had more children, but some of them left somewhere else to America, for example. And one of them was injured in the First World War. And um, so he had a problem with his leg, he couldn't walk properly anymore. And um, so they found him sort of another way of um, yeah, producing some income for the, help, for the family. And so they decided to um, sort of take the post office in. So that was his working space. He was, he was called Karl Backfish. Backfish is the name of the family. And you can, if you, that's sort of the living room, the Gute Stube, we call it. Um, so you can see it's not very big. So it was sort of a, um, yeah. Not a house for really rich people. And when you go around the left, that's uh, one of the sleep bed chambers. So you can have a look in here, yeah, how they lived. The beds are funnily not very big. <laughs> they must have been smaller and most of the time a few people slept in there. So not we, only one. Oh yeah, because we see this type of bed in Germany and Austria, but I've never seen it anywhere else. Like I can recall, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure it did exist mm -hmm. in other places. So maybe, you know, have you been to Open Air Museum in England for? for no, um, I've never. Uh, sorry, I have. Sorry, in, in Beamish. Uh, sorry, yes. Okay. Uh, um, so I, I guess people must have been, sm you know, smaller. But um, it would be interesting to know how this in England was <laughs> the same, or whether they were bigger. <laughs> Taller. But I can remember uh, from things I've seen uh, you know, as a child, for example, I'm sure at my grandparents' house, uh, you mm -hmm. know, okay, the beds from the 1920s, for example. Yeah. Okay, and then I'll show you the kitchen. Yes, so that's a typical kitchen. You have got an oven, and next to it is that's for washing the clothes, but also when they slaughtered a pig or any animal, they would sort of cook their, maybe make a broth in it and cook sausages and stuff like that in there. Oh, so they fill the, the whole thing yeah, up? Yeah, with water and then they would put in whatever they have. They would maybe a piece of meat, something mm -hmm. that wasn't, you know, planned for um, eating as a roast or something. Mm -hmm. And then they would make their own sausage. They would cut pieces and then put it into the... Um, in, you know the like uh, in the peel the mm -hmm. intestines and then they would they would boil this and this would happen in this it's like a big soup yes. and they would eat the broth afterwards and then preserve the soup they would maybe put it in a like roast it again in a Räucherschrank yes mm -hmm. smoke it so yes. that it's preserved but first you have to cook it and yeah. then you you smoke it and the fuel goes in there yeah 
Let's have a look. That's for making the fire and that's for the ashes. Yeah. And here that's yeah for baking cakes, for example. Down in here. Yes. And that's basically that's the only heating, right? Yeah. And what's interesting here is or in the Odenwald when you turn around, mm -hmm. you see a, <coughs> a oven that's for baking bread. So they would bake every six weeks they would um, bake um, bread for to last for at least another you know six weeks. So in the end it was hard and old or sometimes even you know moldy and they yeah. would just cut it off. They wouldn't you know you wouldn't kind of um, put the effort into to heat this every every week, right? So they they would only okay. um, bake well, every it, few weeks. And so this is cut open so you can see how it's you know how it's designed so that people can kind of have a look inside and in other pla in other areas in Germany they had communal houses for baking so everybody in the in the village would bring their bread to that certain house and they would um, bake it there and it's only designed for baking and in the Odenwald everyone had had it attached so when you look through that really dirty window there <laughs> you can see that's kind of the the vault the the room where the whole baking happened yeah yes and what's interesting it's missing here but when you look at the at the chimney there was a, um, a pipe running from here over there to um, to bring the smoke out through that chimney mm -hmm. just to give you an idea also how it would be heated right there is this source of heat here and then you would have this pipe running through the not very high you know room to well, also give you another yeah yeah what it's not bad but it's imagine bad. there's well, a pipe running along here yeah it's oh sure yes not. that would be <laughs> much uh, but if I take your yeah. height, which is about what, 166, Two? 62, sorry, 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 <laughs> I wasn't, okay. sorry. <laughs> I'm but, honoured. Yeah, but yeah. okay, if you take my height, for example, so that, that it's now at about one, mm -hmm. 190, 192, 93 under the beam. So with a pipe, though, that'll bring it down to, uh, I don't know, one, 180, maybe. Yeah, it's but even so, it's, but no, it's, it's, it's top, I think it's quite high, to be quite honest. Okay. Well, yeah, it depends on the perspective, sure. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but yeah, when you look at it that way, yeah, sure, sure. And it, so we have here colonial products, and another thing which is curious, we can see letters which mean they can write. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is kind of, uh, we are looking at in a, uh, the house um, built in the late 19th century, and the sort of the furniture, the interior is from the 1920s. Yes. So in that time, you know, everyone had some sort of schooling. Yes. Yeah. Usually till maybe twelve, you know, at the late latest, and then you would just go to work. But everyone, you know, was capable of writing and, and reading, only to a certain extent. But yeah, and then yeah, you can see that recipes we've put up here from mm -hmm. people. Yeah, it's they are, they are not original from the house, but from this area. You can see, um, let me just check, no, it's, we have this funny way of writing in the past. It's called in Sutterlin, but it's not here. That, I, I, yeah, I thought that was very rare. Yeah, well, um, well, around till the Second World War, just around that time, or in the 1930s, it kind of, yeah, it's, you've got this mish Mish verb forms of language or yes. of the letters, and then it changes into the, the um, letters we have nowadays. I'm just checking. Uh, I, I, you can I know with um, things which are historical, which are very difficult. Goebbels, for example, he wrote using this old form, mm -hmm. um, which m makes his diaries very difficult for anybody to interpret. Yes, you can get used to it. It's just a matter of practice and then you can easily read it. I, I've tried it, but it's like any ha handwriting. You mm -hmm. have to get used to the, you know, to the particular type of writing. Yeah. If once you've done that, you can read it like a book. It's, it's very yeah. easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just takes a lot of practice to start with. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, yeah, then we can go upstairs if you like. Oh, great. Here is, <clears throat> that's uh, a chamber of... Uh, one of the daughters that lived here. Um, so you can see it's obviously it's a girl's room, right? It's for mm. knitting and stitching and ironing and um, sewing, all these kind of things. And um, we know of one daughter of the house, Carolina Backfish. She um, emigrated to the US, to the East Coast. And 
we uh, have three or four letters from her um, within a period of 30 years um, where she describes sort of her emotions and how she first not settled and then finally settled in America and really liked it and enjoyed the life in the end. But in the beginning it was very hard for her. She didn't like it and she had troubles. She, she lost a child and she, yeah, she missed her home but she was af afraid and ashamed of coming back. Yes. And the Odenwald is um, known for, I think in the 19th century, every fifth person emigrated to, to America. It's, so it's yeah, the fifth part of the population. Yes. So it was, was really, a, we call it a poor house, one of the poor houses in Germany. Mm -hmm. And in the 19th century, once the, you know, the, the big um, sea liners and stuff the, were ready, you know, sort of one that got sort of industrialized to kind of um, uh, migrate by ship. A lot of people, yeah, moved to America. Yes. And here we have a, uh, ah, but this is an invoice mm -hmm. for a construction. And uh, so there's August uh, Wagner, who is a, a builder and a stone uh, stonemason. Mm -hmm. And uh, there he's got, what, 74 marks for... No, I can't read that. Well, I suppose I could have. I really, really try. Oh, there it is. Okay, that yeah. that makes it m much easier. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a translation for basically um, for yeah uh, stones for building and yeah. materials you need yeah. sand and, and uh, work yeah. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For yeah, that's for um, for a chimney. Yeah. But here is that Sutterlin, right? Yeah, that's the old kind of writing. Yes. So that's an S, for example. That's an A. That's a C. That's a K. It's mm -hmm. called Sack. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's yeah that's it's really hard and that's um, Roman R O M N so it's it's really yeah it just needs a little practice that's for example that's a P that's a O again that's a R T L so yeah K A M E N A R B E I T Yes. So that's hard because that's always I read an A, but it's an E. Yes. <laughs> yes, huh? Yeah, you just have to get your brain used to it. <laughs> and that's funny too, see the stairs? Um, there's still a few holes in there. Ah, and I've seen that before, but I don't know what it means. No? No. Yeah, you have a guess. Ventilation? Yes, for? Not Harry Potter? I know, I've never actually read <laughs> Harry Potter. I know it takes place in a, um, a railway station or something. And, um, Okay, um, so I can show you the entrance on, okay. it's on the side. It's so we have the, um, what, well I had a house, sorry I didn't own it, but I lived in a house mm -hmm. uh, like this. Now you get it. Ah, oh, so the dog lived down there. Not the dog. The cat? The, no, but the goose. Oh, okay. And oh no, I've never guessed that. Yeah. <laughs> they had geese and a duck. Mm -hmm. And the duck lived outside under the outside space. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's for the, for the goose. But the goose is very German, I think. To have, okay. Geese, yeah, yeah. Really? Yes, I think mm. so. Well, <laughs> and ducks are really English, I guess. <laughs> well, uh, ducks, yeah, I've never known anybody had a duck. Wild, huh? yes. wild ducks, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, I guess people like them for um, for for a... Uh, for Christmas and in November it's St. Martin's Day and that's usually when the Martin's guns, mm -hmm. when they were slaughtered. Um, yeah, it's, I think it, it's maybe a Christian background and they're kind of easy, easy to, to, um, to keep. They, mm -hmm. you know, they would have them communally in the village mm -hmm. and sometimes there was a maid or a, or a girl or someone who was taking care of them and they would just walk around sort of the place and just pick the green stuff mm -hmm. and eat from the water, the little stuff that grows on top. Yes. So it's not very high in, you know, in cost to hold, to keep them. And the eggs are bigger. Yes, the eggs are bigger and apparently very nice. I don't, I don't eat them, so I can't tell you, but yeah. I don't eat eggs at all. No, sometimes chicken, but not that many. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here we are more in the storage area. That's something you, you have in every house, you know, because you have to imagine they didn't have any supermarkets, no discounters, nothing to, um, to, go, to, to go and buy groceries. Um, they had, you know, what we call colonial warenläden. Yes. But um, in the country, in little tiny villages, it's not very common, and then you would only buy for sugar, for example, stuff like that, things you, you couldn't 
produce yourself. But apart from that, um, it was more or less a self-sustainable um, circle of life. They had a huge garden, they had fields, they had um, animals. For example, eggs. You know, um, a chicken, it has a sort of a natural cycle and there's a time when they stop laying eggs and yes. then they would just preserve them in something, it's like a, it looks like ash to keep them much longer and then to bake cookies for Christmas, you know, mm -hmm. Weihnachtsplätzchen. And then they they just didn't have eggs for, for a few weeks and then they would start again. So mm -hmm. they they found lots of kind of, yeah... Um, yeah, good ways of preserving stuff, and that that's for baking bread, right? That, that would be where the the dough would be um, Placed. rising. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, rising. Oh, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that they keep the round shape, and then they would just put them in the oven, and then <clears throat> they would um, store the baked bread in the in the cellar. I can show you downstairs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then that's here is a more a uh, apple region. They had some wine in the past. Um, nowadays, it's not it's not a wine region, but they yeah it was. We have quite kind of archival um, papers that indicate that there was um, that they were um, growing wine. Also, I mean it's a Christian kind of you know um, site here. Um, Roman Catholic Church was very powerful, and it's important to, to have the wine for the you know for the rituals they they had. Okay. Okay, what else? Um, this is kind of for um, storing nuts and stuff like that. There was a big walnut tree behind. Um, they would preserve sauerkraut, mm -hmm. <laughs> what the Germans are known for. This is for um, storing um, and preserving stuff from the f from the flies. So you can imagine, oh, it's closed, that mm -hmm. they would have their um, smoked sausages in yeah. there mm -hmm. and also... If they preserved apples, for example, mm -hmm. um, dried apples and stuff like that, they would just um, put them in there to dry and also then to keep it and to uh, yeah keep keep the flies away. Yeah. So the apples, oh yeah, I was going to tell you, um, they made um, what is called apfelmost. It's a kind of a, like a wine made of apples, yes. and then that's something they would drink the whole winter, mm. right? And then they would store it in the barrels in the in the cellar. Yes. And then you have kind of little smaller bottles to just bring it up and yeah. I, I think that is in English that cider. Oh yeah, I've sure, it's a cider. Yes. Yeah, mm. yeah. No, it's not as fizzy as the French cider, but <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Well, there's major differences. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, and oh, from yeah, country sure. to country. <laughs> uh. So and upstairs, usually it's where the children of the house live, or also if they had. Um, uh, what is the name in English? Um, Knechte und Mägde, um, sort of uh, staff. Um, yes, there's uh, a name for it. Servants. Servants, yeah. But this particular bed here, that was of the son who was injured in the Second World War, in the first, sorry, in the, in the First mm -hmm. World War, and who who ran the post agency downstairs. Mm -hmm. So people from the village have um, told us. So it's kind of an oral history. Um, uh, story behind that he lived up here and that he really lived like that under the you know the bare roof mm -hmm. um, and just having a, a blanket up to because the snow and the rain will come in in the, yes. in the winter you can see that um, when it's heavily snowing you, you go up here and it's a thin layer of snow in here so it's not you know it's not um, a snow vacuum in here. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, it has a lot of holes and stuff where the wind and the weather comes in. And so it's quite impressive, I think, when you imagine it. It, it must have been really cold. <laughs> Terribly cold, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to think that he, he, the state had the power to send him to war mm -hmm. and to get him injured, but they didn't have the, uh, the power to give him a, a roof. Mm. Yeah, and also kind of, you know, th there was some sort of a, a rente, a, um, of a, a government it's money which is paid to an in, invalid person yes yeah. but yes. it's yeah it's it was tiny you know yes. not enough to yes. live and yeah and he was you know he was to be fed and kept and sort of uh, supported by the family so yes. they also found a way that he could help them you know support the whole community yes okay so we can't go up there because we have a lot of wasps Wasps, uh, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, right. Well. Lots of uh, nests up there, but okay, it's just well, another story, yes.
this is a building for drying spelt. Now spelt is very much a regional speciality here still you can uh, get uh, things which are made from it. I've got a little bit in my van so I'll be having a go at doing something with that later. You can buy it in health food st stores and the likes. It's very rich in B vitamins for example. Now I personally tend not to eat things with gluten in them. I'm not um, gluten free or anything like that. It just uh, goes along, it doesn't really sort of go along with my diet profile. Nonetheless it's not one of the things I'm definitely avoiding. So I will be eating it whilst I'm here in order to try local specialities. Now what would happen in far off times was that when it was harvested it would still often be wet so it had to be dried out to stop it going off and it would be dried out in a place like this. And once it was dry, it could then be stored. house in front is from 1777 but clearly that would have been the property of somebody much more wealthy than many of the other houses we see here. This is the house of a day labourer. It was built in the uh, 18th century. It was brought here and they managed to keep the sort of the wonky uh, shape of the roof and the building. So congratulations there to the people who did that. Absolutely amazing work. Now the day labourers were amongst the poorest of the agricultural community. Nonetheless, I would have to say, uh, it doesn't look so poor inside. So we have some of the details of it, brought here 30 years ago. So you can see that the roof is much lower than it is in other buildings. So with, even without that beam, I'm almost touching, so it can't be much more than 177 high. And under the beam, well, it's about 160 something. Okay, in the entrance you've got the first bed with a uh, warming pan. Got this type of stove, which in my opinion does a really good job. I really like that, them things. My experience with them has been in, uh, in Eastern Poland, you still get quite a few. So here's the kitchen. Okay, there's not a huge amount of space, largely because of the low ceiling. And if you want to get into the roof, there's steps up there, or under the roof, the attic, and here, child's bed, and another bed. And this is the storage. Get my head on the roof.
This is the uh, bar, the pub, gas house, something along those lines. Obviously, there's plenty of them in Germany and still today. But this one's done as it once was. Now, they still serve things here. I've been served with this apple shawler, which is apple juice and mineral water. But there's other things as well.